Welcome to PhotographersTalkRadio.com. This is Kyle Zimmerman, and we are recording episode number one. I am interviewing today an amazing photographer, Bobby Kingsley, who lives on the East Coast. I live in the Southwest, and she also happens to be a great friend of mine. So before I go too much further, I'm just going to say, hey, Bobby, how you doing? Hi, Kyle. I'm doing very well today. Thank you. Yay. It's Sunday morning. What are you doing on your Sunday morning besides talking to me? Well, I have to get ready to edit um, a new job. I have to finish up a job that I've been doing, uh, which is very tedious. So I have to finish the editing today. And then I have to order a new camera (laughs) and everything else I have to do, like clean my place. That sounds fun. What kind of new camera are you going to get? Um, go. I think I'm going to get the uh, the Nikon D700. And is that going to be like a backup or like a replacement for your main camera? A replacement. It's an upgrade replacement. Awesome. Well, for all of you who don't know anything about either of us, uh, Bobby and I met. Ooh, tw- how many years ago, Bobby? In like '88, '89. Yes, in in Milan, Italy. Yes, we were both fashion photographers, uh, living abroad, living the glamorous life. (laughs) Yes, it was. It was. Very glamorous. And we met and became fast friends, and uh, our friendship has, you know, persisted all these years, except our careers have gone into different cities. And I think also sometimes in different directions and then back again into similar directions right that's right exactly I think we do the pretty much the same thing at this point yeah so um, Bobby tell uh, tell us a little bit you know it's like I really don't even know how what tell tell us a little bit about your career and how you got started well I got started uh, shooting jazz musicians in New York City where I'm from and I started doing that in 75 when I got my first camera, ni- that was 1975. <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> In case this is being listened to way in the future. <laughs> right. And um, so I started doing a lot of um, publicity photography for dancers and musicians in New York. And those pictures got published in New York in jazz magazines and, and in newspapers in New York and in Europe, mostly Paris. Cool. Did you like study photography in school or something? No, I'm self-taught. Although at one point I took a, a course for studio lighting for a few weeks so that I could get a job as an assistant in a studio so that I could learn that. And that's similar like with me too. That's pretty much the extent of the kind of photography classes I took. I mean, I took some lighting. I took a little bit of four by five. Mm-hmm. But anyway, um, so you started shooting jazz musicians in New York, and right. you, so you got published with that. Yes, and, and then also while I was during that same period, well, a little bit later, very shortly later, I was in college, and I had an internship. I had different internships for one was the New York Post, another was the Daily News, New York Daily News, mm-hmm. um, and I uh, used to go out and photograph a lot with them, and they would give me assignments, and they published published some of them. So I have been published as well in uh, very early on in the New York Post and the Daily News. And so, how did you get interested in starting to pursue fashion? Well, I had been doing photography for several years by this point, and I decided to become more commercially viable, <laughs> and I thought that I should pick a, um, something not photojournalism, because that really doesn't pay anything, almost, and I decided within commercial photography that fashion photography would probably be the most interesting, even though I had no background in fashion whatsoever, and was not very fashionable either, but... <laughs> Well, I was, but in my own way, and um, so I so very naively I was going to move to Brazil to Rio de Janeiro and and pursue my fashion photography career. However, at the same time, when I was saving up my money and planning to go to Brazil, 
I read an article in Modern Photography about fashion photography in Milan, Italy, and how it was booming and how exciting and there were so many opportunities for new photographers. And so I kept trying to put that article out of my mind because I wanted and was set on going to Brazil, but it kept popping up. Like, the voice kept saying to me, why are you going to Rio when you should be going to Milan? And I kept trying to fight it, but I just, my practical side just had to win over. And so I decided reluctantly, very reluctantly, to go to Milan. And it was at the end of October in 1986. And I knew that, oh, I had read articles about it. I knew it was cold and foggy, and I didn't want to go. So as a, pr a present to myself, I decided to spend two weeks in Ibiza on the way to Milan from New York because I had a very, one of my very, very good friends had just moved there. So that's what I did. I flew to Ibiza with all my stuff and stayed with her and her husband for a couple of weeks, had a great time, and then flew, very reluctantly flew to Milan. <laughs> and I knew, oh, before I left New York, I had gone to a party with a, a, given by a French friend of mine from Paris, and she told me that, uh, I should, uh, she would introduce me to an American friend of hers who was had lived in Milan for a couple of years and that she loved it. So at her party, I met the woman and the woman just loved Milan and she made me excited to go. And she gave me the phone number of a guy who would give me the phone number of a good friend of hers because the friend had moved. So when I flew into Milan, I didn't know anybody at all and I tried to get a hotel. I couldn't speak Italian. I could speak some French, you know, but not Italian. So I finally, long story short, finally found a really crappy hotel <laughs> because everything was booked up because they have their, those ferrer, ferriers, you know, the industrial affairs going on. So I found a hotel and then I took myself to dinner and I had some, I was drinking some wine and stuff at dinner and I was <laughs> fighting my tears because I was like, so, so it was cold and foggy and I just left beautiful Ibiza and I was sitting in the restaurant fighting my tears because it was, I was thinking, what am I going to do? I'm here in this freezing cold place. I don't know. So I can't speak a word. And so then I thought, I'm going to call this phone number, the guy who the woman at the party gave me. I said, I can't get worse than this. So I call him up. <laughs> <laughs> I call him and he, um, it's, I could hear he's very kind of like put it, trying to put me off on the phone. And then he says, I said, oh, hi, I met so-and-so and, -so and she took, gave me a phone number. And so he, so he puts me off and then finally he goes, okay, meet me at such and such a place in Milan. He says, I said, how will I know you? And he said, I'll be wearing an impermeable which I figured out meant raincoat because <laughs> of my friend, because <laughs> it was impermeable. So, so I get on the metro because I can go into any city cold and get every I get everywhere I want to go. I it's I have, have no problems traveling. So I get on the metro. I get I go to where he told me to meet him. I go in and so we're talking and then we're talking. We had a few drinks and then he says, "Okay, let's go pick up my friend." who is an American architect who was staying with him at the time. And he says, we'll go out to dinner. So I said, okay. I didn't tell them I had just eaten dinner. But <laughs> I said, okay. So we went and picked up his friend who was from New York as well. And the three of us were in the car driving to a pizzeria. Um, oh, sorry for the um. <laughs> <laughs> so... Oh, so we went to eat dinner, and I was telling them, the two of them, Michael and Pino, Pino was the Italian guy, and I was telling them about how my plans had changed from going to Brazil to coming to Milan because I had read this article, and it talked about a cafe where all the models hung out and all the photographers and models and hair and makeup people, and they both asked me, they said, what's the name of the cafe? So I said, it's called the White Bear Cafe, and they both said in unison, oh, the White Bear, and so then after we ate dinner, we went to a disco, and we were dancing and drinking, and I, and I felt so comfortable and so familiar with these guys. I kept having to remind myself that only a few hours earlier I was desolate and, and almost crying and not knowing at all. And here I was having the grandest time in the world. So, um, oh, sorry for the um. <laughs> and so, so, so then after very late, they drove me, uh, 
Pino drove, well, they both drove me to my hotel. And then the, as he dro dropped me off, Pino said to me, come to my office tomorrow for lunch and we'll go to the White Bear Cafe. So I said, great. So the next morning, I, uh, the next afternoon I go and I meet him at his office and we go to the White Bear Cafe and there was all these American models in there, young, very young American models. And, I, and we were sitting there eating and I was watching and I pulled one of the models aside and I started asking her all these questions. And so she was said, oh, well, I said, how does it work as a photographer in Milan? So she said, well, you, you know, you can take you can do photo tests. No, she said model tests. So I said, what's that? And so she told me and I started taking, I started taking notes and I was like taking, uh, she said, you charge the money and I'm going, how much do you charge? How much can you get? What are the names of the model agencies? So she gave me a whole bunch of information and I had all these notes. And so then after lunch, Pino said to me, he said, I'm so impressed with you and that you're so serious. He goes, we're going to go to your hotel and get your stuff and you can stay with me and Michael. So I said, great. So we went to my hotel. We got all my stuff, and I had tons. I had my strobes and everything. And we, I ended up staying at his house, and two weeks later, he became my boyfriend. And that's <laughs> basically the start of it. Fabulous. <laughs> I love that story. <laughs> it's a good story. It's a good story. So you fly into Milan. You go sit in a cafe. You make a couple phone calls. Couple days, one, phone. one phone call. A couple days later, you've got yourself all set up with how to do it. How old were you, ish? Because I know a lady never tells her age. I was in my mid thirties. Okay, that's exactly how old I was when I went. And um, so then you started approaching model agencies and. Yes. What, ha what happened? Well, I had, um, I had before I left New York, I had taken some pictures of friends of mine in my loft. I had a great loft down in Chinatown. And I took some pictures of friends who were definitely not models, but I dressed them up. <laughs> <laughs> Very 80s it looked. You know, the style was like totally 80s. And I dressed <laughs> them up. And I, so I had some pictures, a few. Uh, and I took them to the model agencies. And they all said to me, oh, these aren't very good, but we'll let you do some tests for free. So I said, okay. And so I th they gave me several, like several agencies. I think it was probably three that I dealt with in the beginning, gave me models to test for free. And it wasn't going so great. I knew that they weren't great, you know. Um, and then there was an um, American photographer living in Milan whose name was Tosca. I think she's from San Francisco. And so I decided to go visit her. She was like the mo uh, the testing queen of Milan. So I decided to visit her and get some pointers. And she was really, really nice. You know, she was on her way. She was getting ready to go back to the States. She had been there many years. So she gave me all these great tips. But the best tip she told me was that you have to get a good model to get good pictures. You know, because I told her I was doing these tests, but I don't like them and I'm not getting paid. So I followed her advice, and I and I picked out a really good model that you, rather than what they offered me. I said I want to shoot this one. So they gave me her, and I took pictures, and they came out great. And then I that was such a revelation. So I started to only shoot really good models, and then slowly, well, one of the agencies, Ricardo Guy, which is the biggest agency in Milan, said to me, "If you keep taking really good pictures, we're, you're going to start getting paid." So I said, "Great," and that's what happened. And then I just got better and better. And I started getting paid for all my tests all the time. And I became known. And then I became the testing queen in Milan, which was great. <laughs> and so at the same time you were the testing queen. Um, so, you, okay, so let's talk about inspiration. So okay. the, you, you shot the beautiful girl and, you know, the model who had something as opposed right. to just whoever they were giving you. Exactly. And it was just quite obvious from that moment that that was, it, it, it inspired you? Mm -hmm. Would you say it inspired you? Yes, because I, I, I understood instantly that a model who can move in front of the camera helps you. You know, I didn't know that. I just, you know, I was doing all the work. And, you know, they really help you. They add a really good model adds and help and inspires me. It's not just me doing all the work. She helps me. And that's what started to happen. And that was the biggest revelation ever. 
Well, what I noticed about your work, like from the get go, was that you would you would never hesitate to like costume someone like you would take people and dress them up like 20s flappers or you would like really see something in these you know people that you were shooting and you would bring out almost like movie like characters it was very cinematic and I just love that about you I was and I never I, that didn't happen for me. I didn't see that in people. So is that something that you started with the less uh, professional models? like, Or is that something that you really developed with the better models? Or is that something you always did? That's something that kind of developed um, as time. I, I didn't do that right in the beginning because I didn't know what I was doing at all. But uh, as oh, I, that developed as time went on. And my biggest, biggest influence ever has always been Italian neorealistic movies, uh, especially Fellini is my major hero in the whole world. And he always has been. And him and Roberto Rossellini and Vittoria De Sica, those guys are my heroes and so I realized as I was shooting that I loved that I loved um, this it's a French thing called mise-en-scene which is it's put into the scene so you take a person and I started to develop this uh, that you would I would take a person I would have you have to get a vision first I would start to get a vision and then build and then build the vision into a photograph that beca- that developed later. Although also while I lived in Italy, I used to watch uh, those wonderful movies on TV with no sound and study the lighting. And I learned so much by studying the lighting of, t- of uh-huh. movies. Is that the, the stuff like The Girls Who Smoke, that whole series? Absolutely, that everything. Ca- that came kind of out of movies? Yes, completely. Uh-huh. And um, so... Tell tell me more about that process of how you imagine that first scene. Like, where do you start? Like, does it come from watching a movie? It or? starts. It starts from different places. Either it can start from the model. Like, sometimes some certain models, I totally inspire. I look at them and I see them as a character instantly, and then I. That's my starting point. Or the clothes can can inspire me or a or a location like if there's a wonderful old palazzo or some wonderful french uh french apartment or some some architectural wonderfulness you know Mm -hmm. that will completely inspire me and then i'll get a model and then i'll get the clothes you know so each of those three things will be the starting point edit point here i'm going to edit this out um hey bobby so right now would be a great time to like speak about specific pictures like if as we're talking about this tell me like like the picture of the girl with the in the car or whatever it is that you want to um refer to i'll put those pictures as we talk about this stuff so i'm going to go back in and as we're talking you can feel free to just mention like and and that girl that was in the car you know and the girl who was leaning on the pole and then later you can make sure i get the right picture Okay, so before I do that, I'm going to bring up, I have to go into my backup and get the file I sent you so Uh I can look at the pictures I sent you. Okay. All right. I'm going to, yeah, open that folder too. This is going really well. So I'm not too wordy? Well, you'll edit, right? Yeah, I'll edit, but, you know, you can... um, this is exactly exactly the kind of stuff I want to talk about. This is what I think is interesting for people. All right. So we're going um, we're going back in now. Okay, wait, let me let me oh shit. Let me pull out that file here. So so sometimes it's a model and yeah. sometimes it's a location. Mm-hmm. And um but like is it ever or it, is it, it can ever be like, the clothes. It could be the clothes. Yeah. Is it ever like um like from an actual movie you've seen? They're all from movie scenes. They're, all the movie scenes are stored in my head. Like, I've watched over and over and over again these movies that completely inspire me. I've watched them many, many times, all of them. So they're all in my head. I don't need to watch the movie again. Although every time I do rewatch a movie, I'm more inspired and more um, validated. 
Did you see the movie Nine? No. <laughs> oh my god. But that's not that kind of movie. Yeah, it's, it's not. You don't know what kind of movie it is. You haven't seen it. Yeah, yeah, I guess you're right. You, you should see it. It's fantastic. It's uh, you know, it's all about Fellini. Oh, oh, that Broadway one. The 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 movie called Nine N I N E Nine. Yeah. Oh, I was thinking of Nine and a Half Weeks. No, no, uh, no. Yeah, no. yeah. Oh, I have seen that. It is beautiful. Yes, you're right. Um, you know, the one with uh, Daniel Day Lewis. Right, right. It's so great. Um, so tell me more about like specific shoots, like something. Wait, wait, can I break? Can I break in? Can, if I open up my bridge and my Photoshop, is that going to mess this up? Because I, I can see so. the pictures. Okay, no. let me. Because, oh, shit, I just opened Fetch. Because this way I can look at them. Um, wait, let me get this all. Which folder did you send me that has the... Uh, which folder did you send me that has the pictures that are most interesting? I just only sent you one folder. Okay. With several types of pictures. Oh, I see. I'm finding the folders from uh, before. Before what? Last year when we were working on the art project, the possible hotel well, art. The hotel art thing. Oh, 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 oh. I don't remember that, what I sent you. You sent me, like, street art. Yeah, I don't remember. Sorry. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, how I'm dare you? Okay, so, Bobby, we're back in. Okay. Um, I've got your folder. I've got... Uh, so... Anyway, about inspiration, like, there's this great picture of a girl, um, a woman who's, like, wearing a top hat. Yeah. Wait, I, I'm trying to get this. Oh, fuck. Hold on. <laughs> this is a family show. No, it's just that, you know, I did something to my, um, Jesus. Jesus, Mary, and Joseph. Okay. I did something to my uh, bridge last night, and now it's not. I'm trying to get that specific file. So it's called Sent Kyle. Oh, yeah, here yeah. it is. Okay. All right, I got it. Got it. So I was talking about the picture called Fashion 5, and it's a picture of a young lady who uh, has a top hat. Okay, I got it. And so where was that taken? Wait, I lied. I don't have it. Um, fashion 5. I got to get this back the way it was. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's it. that was in Dublin. That was uh, for a magazine. Oh, shit. I just opened Photoshop. That was for a magazine um, called, it, it was in Dublin. When I, by the time I got to Dublin, after Paris, no, before Paris, um, I was working a lot, like tons, tons. I was working for all the magazines there. And so this was an assignment. It was called Dickens. And I worked with a great stylist at that point. When, oh, that's another thing I learned. It's like the better the stylist, the better the pictures. So I had a great, great stylist. And this was from that fashion shoot. It was called Dickens. So tell tell me about uh, stylist. You know, like uh, we've heard those words, and I think uh, you know. I know I've worked with stylist too, but I think a lot of people don't know um, what a stylist is. We always think, oh, it's a hair person or something. But mm -hmm. but so this these pictures here, like uh, with the, the young lady with the hat, and then um, the other shot where a woman sitting on a kind of an a ivy brick right. wall right. Um, and then a picture of a woman in a white suit oh uh, yeah um so this so what does a stylist do a stylist is is a person who uh, bring, uh puts together the outfits for each shot and she'll the usually it's a she or at least my experience has been um so they come up with the complete outfit 
um, head to toe, and the really, really good stylists are come up with props as well. I don't know. Did I send you any of my circus pictures? No, but oh, you can. Yeah. Okay, so, so tell me, just pretend that you did. Okay, and so so for my circus shots, for instance, I worked with a stylist. This was also done in Dublin. It's a different stylist who I worked with who had done the Dickens sh uh, shoot. So the stylist for the circus shoot was great. I worked with her a lot, and she always showed up with the wonderful props. And when we talked about the our fashion shoot coming up, I would say to her, wouldn't it be great if the model pulled pulled out a rabbit out of a hat for one of the shots. So she goes, oh, that would be great. So the day of the fashion shoot, we show up really early, and she has a big, gigantic white rabbit, and she's got a top hat, and she's got everything that she's got all these feathers, and we had the greatest shoot in the world because of her. Another time, we just did more of a plain shoot that was like a spring fashion shoot, and she showed up with this big, gigantic straw hat, and mm. that made the picture. And it was like I shot the model from the back with the hat with her hand on her hip, and it was great, and it was because of my stylist. And so what part does a stylist play in the, in the role of, like, creating the entire feeling of the shoot? They're monumental. They're as important as me and the model and the style. It's the three of us. The makeup and the hair, you can, you know, it's more interchangeable. But a stylist, model, and photographer are the keys, I think. Mm -hmm. That's fantastic. So these pictures that you have that um, are like a waitress pouring coffee. Uh-huh. Where, where was that done? That was done in New Mexico. And that was done on one of my visits to to you, Kyle. Oh, my goodness, it is. <laughs> That's our favorite little dive. And um, so we did that. You, It was your idea. It was that person, that model, was actually your assistant. And it was her birthday, I believe. And so for her present, you arranged to have a, this wonderful stylist who showed up with all these different outfits, which I found, I fa thought she was really, really great. She, see, a stylist really um, inspires me because of the clothes and stuff. I get completely inspired. So your stylist totally inspired me, and I think I got some great pictures from that shoot. And that was in, um, she, had a, she had showed up with a waitress outfit, and I just thought that was perfect. And your... Um, your friend was the model, the guy who was sitting in the picture who she was pouring coffee for. Oh, that's so great. That's so great. I totally forgot about that experience. But yeah, that, yeah, that was good. But, you know, that's what I've always loved about you, Bobby. Like, you and I will go out and have coffee or lunch in some restaurant. Mm -hmm. You really are the photographer that has your camera all the time. I mean, I don't do that. When I get off work, I, I most often put my camera in my bag and um, I relax. I stop thinking visually. You, we will be sitting in a restaurant and you'll just yank that camera out and start shooting the waitress or the, oh, yeah. or, the yeah. or a customer that's sitting at a table next to us. And I just love that about you. It's so well, fun, you know? I think you do that too. I mean, that's when I, re I remember you. Hmm. You know the photo that you have of the woman who's wearing like a bathing suit that's all spiky? Oh, right. That's great. What, yeah. What, yeah. What, how did you get this idea and what's that? Is that the one that I put the graphics on? Uh-huh. Uh, so um, that was uh, in Paris. And I was able, when I was living in Paris, uh, doing a lot of tests and stuff. I did a few jobs, but not many, but mostly tests. And I had access to a lot of designers' clothing. And this one place I went and uh, they told me I could take whatever I wanted. So I got this because it was pretty freaky. I like kind of weird stuff, you know. So I picked out this outfit and I had this model who paid me to do the pictures. And I dressed her up in this. And then I... and. It's just me. I I love all these old little cafes and bars in Paris. And so we went there and I had her just posing around. And then I started going into graphic design and I was doing a bunch of um, pieces for a new magazine called D Magazine. And this is what I made. And so for her, and so for every, every, um, oh God, I can't think. 
So for, oh, for, for every design that I made, I, had, I made a new word, like D for debate, D for delight, D for mm-hmm. whatever. And so the, for, then I would come up with a little catchy phrase that went with it. So for hers, and it went with her outfit, it said, you have to have a point to make a point mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. for debate. That's so and so cool. I thought it went well. That's great. So what about this picture that is like John Bon Jovi? Oh, yeah. Is that real? Yes. Yeah. So that, where is that? That was in New Jersey. At, um, John Bon Jovi lives in my town or the next town over, as does Bruce Springfield, Bruce Springsteen. And John Stewart now lives here in Red Bank. And also um, Queen Latifah lives here. And Debbie Harry lives in the next town over. But anyway, so John Bon Jovi, he's, he's a big philanthropist. He does all these um, very, very good um, deeds for people who need it, you know, like people who need to eat and all that. So this was a benefit that he was giving for um, a clinic here in town for people who don't have health insurance. And so this was at the new, um, I think it's called the Prudential, I can't remember the name. It was this big new stadium that they built in Newark, New Jersey. And this was a fundraiser. And everybody who was in the room had donated at least $5,000. And they got to pose with John Bon Jovi. And so this was him just taking a little break, looking out the window over the ice skating rink or whatever it was. Oh, it's gorgeous. Did you come up with that idea or you just saw that? I just saw it. He uh-huh. was just there. And I go, oh, my God. I <laughs> did, did, did he know you were shooting him? No. Uh-uh. I, I took tons of pictures with him posing with people, but he didn't know that I was doing that. Mm-hmm. That is so cool. So where do you find your inspiration these days? Do you still shoot fashion? No, very seldom because it's where I live now. There's no fashion industry, and I'm, you know, it's like I'm happy. I don't, I don't want to live in a big city. I'm an ex New Yorker. I don't. I lived in big cities all around, and I just want to be where I am, which is I love this place. Uh, there's no fashion here, so my big insp- inspiration is no matter who I'm shooting or for what, I try to get the best pictures possible, mm-hmm. and try to make as exciting as possible. I do get inspired when I have a great beautiful bride and everything is gorgeous you know if it's a beautiful setting and everything is then then, or or I'm also inspired by people's faces to Uh do portraits Uh uh-huh and like there's a picture that was taken at a reception and like it's just like pretty people in cute dresses looking at their camera oh that was a wedding that was a wedding that I did so do you find weddings inspiring I do. Yeah, it depends. Like that wedding was inspired. See, living here on the East Coast, I live in a very wealthy area just outside of New York. And so the people, the the style of the weddings is different from, say, New Mexico, you know, the way that people dress and all of that. Mm-hmm. And I live right on the ocean. So, but this picture to me is a complete Vogue picture. It's like totally Vogue, you know? Mm-hmm. Awesome. So, well, cool. I guess um, we should wrap that up. We've uh, spent a lot of time talking. I could just talk to you for hours, but Mm -hmm. I'm going to let you go, and maybe we'll get together again sometime soon and talk about something else. But, Bobby, you are amazing, and I am inspired by you all the time. Well, I'm inspired by you all the time. And I always learn so much from you every single time I talk with you. Mm-hmm. Even to this day. Ah, Well, we need, <clears throat> we need to get together and hang out. We need, okay. to, we need to go on another photo excursion. That would be fun. That time I spent with you in New Mexico shooting, oh, that was great. I loved it. I know. Those are some of the best pictures that I have of myself. <laughs> you know, I just love yeah. that. So cool. What's your website, Bobby? www.bobbykingsley, that's B-O-B-B-I-E-K-I-N-G-S-L-E-Y, photo.com. Awesome. Well, cool. Thanks, and I love you, girly. Thank you. See you soon, I hope. Okay, bye-bye. Bye.